Hi, welcome to Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. I'm Christy Friesen and what I want to show you today is remember that cute little steampunk fish you made? You don't? Well, there's a tutorial on it right here at FireMountainGems.com. So go do that and come on back and we're going to take that cute little steampunk fish and put it inside its own little ocean of water. Isn't that nice? Now here's some of the things that you're going to need to do this. Obviously, first and foremost, a steampunk fish. So there's your cute little steampunk fish, small enough to fit inside some sort of receptacle. I chose this wonderful little thing. It's a, a vintage steampunk watch looking thing with a clear glass backing. And as you can tell, we've got a little fish in there just waiting to get the rest of his resin. But that is wonderful. Anything like that is going to work fantastic. In order to make his little world a little bit more interesting, I want you to get a couple of beads, something light colored. I've just got a few little bitty bicones here, and you can see they're kind of a pale blue color. You could use seed beads, little glass drops of uh, a round drop of glass, anything that's got a little color to it. Crystals lose their shine under the resin water, so we're going just for color there. And of course, more steampunk gears. The little ones like this are better because then you can scatter them in the water. But a larger one's not bad, because it can hang out on the top. So gather up those ingredients, as well as a couple of tools. Needle nose tweezers work fantastic. That helps you pick up all those little bits. Moistened fingertip does well, too, so have one of those around. And you also need a needle tool, just to kind of nudge things around and move them, uh, making sure they're in the resin in the proper places. Pavelka glue, Lisa Pavelka polybonder glue. I love that stuff. It will help get your fish into position. And last but not least, Magic Gloss. Magic Gloss is a, a UV resin, not a two-part resin, but a UV resin. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but you need some of that as well. Okay, so there's your ingredients. Let's get ready to put your fish in the water. Okay, so now you've gathered up all the ingredients that you're going to need to put your little fish in an ocean of resin. So let's begin. The first thing, of course, that we got was this beautiful little round, steampunk, vintage-looked glass case. The glass case on the back is really impressive. It really will make your fish look like it's see-through. You can put the fish in other receptacles or containers, but this one's really kind of cool. So to prep this, it's, it's very easy. I like to make sure that that fish doesn't move around so that the resin doesn't get up underneath them. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue, and I'm going to go back to this polybonder glue because it really works so nicely. It dries so quickly, and this brush applicator makes it super, super quick. I'm brushing just a little bit on there and just placing him where I want him to live and press down tight. Usually it's the pressure that kind of helps the glue grab. And if you get it all over your fingers, usually a little bit of nail polish remover will take that off. All right, so he should be set in there nicely. Thanks, glue. Now, all you're going to do is add resin a little at a time. This is a UV resin. UV resin means that it needs UV light, good old sunlight, to harden. It doesn't air dry, it doesn't heat dry, it needs sunlight to dry. And the nice thing about this stuff, it's awesome, is that it's all mixed up, ready to go. You don't have to measure things. You just got to squirt it in. So I'm going to squirt it in. It's got a nice little applicator tip, and I'm only going to get about an eighth of an inch of resin all the way around. You see, I'm kind of going around the fish and just blobbing it in there. Don't worry if drips on him a little bit. He's going to get covered up, so it won't matter. Then once you've got a little bit of resin in there, all you want to do is kind of rock and roll that thing around. You kind of tip it from side to side and look to see that it's getting in all the edges. And I'm looking and seeing that hmm, I have a few more edges, so I'm going to put just a tad more in there, make sure I cover it all good. Isn't that easy? A little slower. Keep going. Okay. So now I've got just a bit more in that container, and now it's going to be a little easier to rock it around. What that does is it gets it to all the edges. This is a self-leveling resin, and that basically means that once you put it out to all the edges, it will pull back and level itself out. All right, I think we got it right to the edge. Boom. Okay, so now you have a fish. He has about an eighth of an inch of resin in there. You can add some fun bits. I've got a couple of little crystals, and you can use beads. Anything with a bit of color. Crystals tend to lose their shine, but they do keep all of their pretty little color. So I've dropped a couple of beads in there. And I can't see too far to put the little gears in, but I'm going to drop one in anyway. So now I've got a little bit of a soup. Got a fish, got some little liquids in there, put a few accent bits. And if you have daylight, sunlight, 
It's hard to do that at night, so obviously daytime sunlight. You're going to put it directly under the sun and let it sit out there for 10 to 15 minutes. If you have a nail uh, drying lamp or a UV lamp, you can just slide that baby right underneath the light and let it cure that way. So artificial sunlight or real sunlight both work. Little teeny eighth of an inch layer takes about 10 to 15 minutes for that layer to harden. The beautiful thing about using this UV resin is that we can do little layer, little layer, little layer, little layer, and each layer you can add a few more beads, a few more gears, anything like that just to keep the interestingness going. So we're going to let that dry cure for a few minutes and then we'll come back and add another layer. Okay, so welcome back. You've had 15 minutes for your UV to cure, either in the sunlight or in your lamp. Now hopefully you weren't looking directly into the sun or into your UV lamp because you know that's bad for your eyes, right? Okay, so now we have to see if that UV is ready to add another layer. Remember that's the cool thing about this particular kind of resin is you can add layer after layer with fun little bits interspersed. So just pull it out and take your thumb and smash it right in the middle and if it sticks to your thumb, no wait, that's not how we do it. You just take a needle tool and you very carefully test. If it feels like a gummy bear, it's not done yet. If it feels firm, you're ready to put your next layer on. This next layer is almost identical to what we just did in that you're just taking your resin and you're pouring it just like you did before. Couple little drips all around the fishy bits, little more all around. If you want, and I do, I'm gonna put some resin right on top of him and it'll just flow over the top and onto some of those little gear bits. You can even put some on his eye if you want. What that will do is help hold those pieces on and since he's in the water anyway, it'll look quite natural. Remember that little rock and roll? So you're going to rock it around, make sure that resin gets into all the corners. See right there, get together. If they can't get it together, whoa, that's where your needle tool comes in. You just go back and forth until it gets right where you want it. It's also handy for getting rid of bubbles. You see he's got little bubbles there, probably just a little fishy gas. Get in there and poke them and get them out of there. Then if you have a little resin on your needle tool, don't lick it off. Use a wet wipe or tissue. And then you can add just a few more little beads and gears and you're ready to put it right back in the lamp again. If you have a large gear, you can lay that right on top, usually at this stage, because the resin's high enough to where that can float on that top layer. And it'll add a nice little bit of interest and a little bit of different depth to the whole look of the thing. Then guess what we're gonna do? Put it right back under the light, let it harden one more time. Okay, find something to do for 15 minutes, that's going to cure. Okay, so let's take a look and see if the resin is all dry. Sure looks like it. I like how much I've filled it up. It has just a little bit of resin. He looks pretty good in there. But of course you know, you can add more layers of resin as you wish. Layer after layer, harden in between each one. Once it overflows and gets all over the table, you probably should stop. Once you've got it how you like it. Why don't you put a couple of jump rings on there and add some chain, make it into a necklace. Then you can put it on and show it off to all your admiring friends who will really love the kind of creativity that you've made here. And don't forget, all the things we use to make this, the component, the resin, the poly clay, tools, beads, all that good stuff, they're all available right here at firemountaingems.com.